Hey guys, and welcome back to GZ Doom Builder. I'm going to be naming this episode, Episode 1, as I'm starting fresh with all of my tutorials for now, so um, I'll be keeping all the old ones up until I've gone over them all and redone them, but for now I'm just going to be starting off with all the basic stuff in the engine. So, just quickly here, if we hit F6 um, to check our game configurations and make sure everything's correct, we're going to be using a couple of different game configurations, um, within these few tutorials. Um, so here if we want to click on Doom 2 hex and format and just make sure that you've got Doom2.wad added as a resource. If not, click add resource, go to browse and browse through all of your files to try and find uh, the um, IWAD that you want to use um, to mod with. Um, this contains all of the resources in it and um, you know you double click it and you just press OK. I don't need to because I've already got it here. But this has all the resources like textures and things, you know, like NPCs, uh, weapons, ammo, all that kind of crap. And then you just make sure that UDMF UDMF format is the same, excuse me. <coughs> and then you just press OK. Now that's that done, and all of your game resources for the tutorials we're going to be doing should be fine. Now what we're going to want to do is just press Control N on your keyboard to bring up the map options. Now make sure your game configuration is set to Doom 2 Hexen format. Uh, the script type is ZDoom ACS. And down here it should show the resources you have. Um, which should only be the Doom 2 IWAD and just set your level name to whatever you want for this I'm just going to set it to example 1 and then press OK and it should just bring up your new blank empty map um, with what, well, what you should see on your screen is now a vast grid that just covers absolutely everything the entire map is just a vast grid and then in the center here you should always just have this little yellow too far this little yellow cross in the middle uh, that marks the perfect center of the map um, if you can't see this then what you want to do is go to uh, view next to file and edit here or you can press V uh, alt and V to bring that up if it works it's not working today okay um, either way, um, when these have like a little underline beneath them, it just means that you can press the first letter of the word to bring it up. Anyway, what you want to then do is go here and just hit render grid. As you can see, this makes the grid vanish. Um, alternatively, you can just press Alt G, make the grid appear and disappear. And that will hopefully bring the grid up for you if you couldn't see it in the first place. Now, you should be able to see it. Um, when you first start it up, unless you've used this before and played around with it and accidentally turned it off. If you have, that's how you turn it back on. If it's a fresh install and you can't see it, then there's something wrong because by default you should just be able to see the grid. It's it's default, you know, it's what should be there. Anyway, by default, whenever you first start a new map in GZ Doom, it has the vertices tool selected um, already um, which is what pastes those little dots in which are like the corners and edges of a sector or a line there sorry they're points within a line that can make up a sector um, now in regards to sectors you can use the vertices tool to um, create a sector so if you right clicked you can also just create a line so right click where you want the line to start, click where you want it to end. To create a line, you would then, once you've done that, just right click and voila, you have a line. Um, now vertices would just add more points within this line. You can right click or you can press insert to do this. And you can just drag them around and that's vertices. Um, and you can just highlight them all and delete them to delete them all. Uh, just pressing insert just puts in vertices there. That's what I was doing earlier. Oops. <coughs> uh, 
and um, now we'll move on to actual creations of sectors which you can again also do with vertices not the reason we're here mainly but well sort of is anyway if you press S you will then select the sector tool which you can then right click you can create lines with this if you want no, that's not what it's for because now I can't delete the line unless I get the line tool out or the vertices tool out select it and press delete um, or you can press insert and it will let you just build it up like this and you can create a sector by just um, drawing it out and then reconnecting it up with the starting point and as you can see the sector tool highlights the entire sector I can select it um, the only issue with really with using the sector tool to create sectors is if you want to create a sector within the sector you can't then right click where you want it to go because it brings up the edit sector menu um, so instead what you have to do is find about where you want the new sector and within it and press insert and draw the sector out within the previous sector and there you have a sector within a sector um, deleting it will then do that which basically just makes it walls within the middle whereas if I don't delete it it's just an adjustable sector within the first sector um, right so now that we have our sector um, I'm going to create another sector just to the side of it I'm going to try and keep it the same length the exact same size just two same size squares with a corridor interconnecting the two of them now I'm actually gonna make this corridor oh, a little bit bigger by just grabbing the line tool here right clicking the line and dragging this out and that makes this corridor a bit bigger and now if I press T to bring up things the things tool I can right click here and just place down a player start and now we're going to want to test our map um, now <coughs> the chances are if you've just installed GZ Doom Builder you've never used it before or even if you have and you've just never tested a map out you won't have um, any you won't have GZ Doom set up with GZ Doom Builder or whatever Doom port you use in order to be able to test it so what you'll want to do is go to tools <laughs> can't believe I forgot and then game configurations now under here you want to go to testing um, and under engine just click new and then double click the engine you wish to use it will name it consequently now I've got two of the same so I'll just delete that myself but it should look like this and um, changing the skill level isn't majorly necessary and then you just press OK and you have um, a testing environment set up so you can test your map now which with in regards to changing your difficulty in that area not mattering if you want to test your map in a different difficulty you can always head up to here under test map press a down arrow and choose a difficulty now the one with the living Kako demon means that there will be enemies the one with the dead Kako demon means you'll test it without the enemies or any obstacles it doesn't really matter whichever one you click it will then immediately boot up into testing the map or you can alternatively just press F9 and it will boot up with your current settings and here you can see we um, are in our two uh, three sectors in fact um, they're all here everything's ready in the world exactly how we made it all the same textures everything's the same collisions are fine you don't really have to worry about them in Doom Engine but yeah so now if we just quit the game we can move on to adding in a door um, which is arguably the most fun part really um, so if we go here with the line tool and you can do this with the vertices tool um, well actually you probably couldn't because vertices tool you just add the vertices into the lines but you can do this with the sector tool or the line tool I myself personally prefer using the line tool because I make everything with the line tool, that's just how I make everything. 
and you draw it out like that so I'll go over that again um, you just draw the door out like this within the corridor it doesn't have to be the same size it can be 32 in width um, I normally make my doors that big or small even and there you go that's your door that's that constructed now what you want to do is left click on these two lines and then right click on them to bring up the edit line defs um, and edit both of them at the same time you then want to head down to the trigger menu down here and select it and just set that to player presses use and then up to the action menu here you can either press this down arrow and scroll down look for door generic somewhere which is all the way all the way down here in the 200s it's under 202 here uh, here door generic or you can click on browse action here expand the door menu and just double click on door generic or you can just go here if you know the action number and type in 202 and it sets it to door generic and voila we have a door and then you just press ok it's that easy you have a door except um, what we want to do now is if we press Q to go into visual mode here um, you can see this is where the door is um, there is not actually, a, not actually a door there, it's just an empty space with you know, the separated sectors of where we've made the door. We want to select these two walls here and right click them. And set them both to lower unpegged. And now we just want to head to this middle texture here in the top texture section. Select it, go to doors and just set that to a door track. This then means that, you know, it's what the door slides up and down and now with my doors they do this in the in classic doom levels with their doors if you select the ceiling and right click it and select the se set the ceiling texture to if you go to base and scroll down and look for flat 20 alternatively you can go to filter and just search it up double click it and then that's the bottom of the door so it doesn't have the same texture as the rest of the ceiling and then with that still selected, you can simply just drag it down to floor level. Now the reason I keep this selected is if I don't, every time it, I want to scroll it down, I have to follow it with my cursor, move, and if I accidentally go too far, I'll accidentally drag the roof down here, whereas if I have this selected, I can look all the way over here at this roof and still drag that one down. So it makes it easier. Now we can see here that the textures for the door are missing. Um, if we ran this, it looks like that. There's holes in the wall, you can't get through, and you can see the other side of the level. Perfectly fine, but you can't shoot through it. It's just an invisible obstacle, an invisible wall. Um, so what we want to do here is in visual mode, just select this wall here, or not even, just right click it, select upper and I like to use big door 2 myself but you can go to doors and choose any of the door textures here as long as it fits for example if I use this it doesn't fit so it uses two of the doors or it doesn't look too bad there are worse there are better examples I can use like exit door here <laughs> it looks terrible because um, it's not the right size so I'm going to use big door 2 <coughs> it fits perfectly for the size we've chosen and then and while still looking at this texture, I'm just going to press Ctrl C, head to the other side, and press in my middle mouse button to paste the texture. And um, one last thing I want to mention is these um, little. Hmm, there we go. These little parts that point out from the line here are very important when making a door. If they're facing outwards, then they're facing towards the player, which means the player can activate it, whereas if they're facing inwards, they're facing away from the player, which means the player can't activate it. I'll give an example. If I hit F9 here, I can just quickly test my door. It works, it opens, and see how these textures stay still when they don't slide up. That's because we set them to lower and pegged. Door then closes again. Opens fine, both sides. I can do it as many times as I want, and that's fine. Now, um, if you flip these, 
I don't really need to flip that one. And I run it. <coughs> Heading up to the door, I can't use it. Whereas, if I no clip to the other side, I can use it from this side only. Um, it can be useful for one sided doors, but one sided doors only really need you to just have, you know, this side set to a generic door and the other side not. Um, one thing I should have mentioned earlier, which I forgot, is set it to repeatable action um, every time. So, unless you only want the door to be used once, this means that the door can be used as many times as you want on both sides. Um, as an important point that I nearly forgot to uh, include completely, um, but there we have it. We have successfully created both our door, uh, both our sectors, and our door. They all work, and that is basically that. Um, in visual mode, I should have probably mentioned this. To move, it's ESDF instead of WASD. As you see, W and A do different things, that's A, I have actually no clue what that does, oh uh, it lines up your textures. The more you know, uh, W, I don't know what that does, um, that's the arrow keys that I'm doing there, to like adjust the textures manually, if I do that and press A, it adjusts the textures to the changes I've made, but only does it for left and right and not up and down, okay. So I've learnt something in, in the tutorial today. <laughs> um, and also, if you have multiple selections or just any selections, pressing C in both visual mode and non-visual mode clears your selections. And again, if you want to save this for later, just Control S and save. And there you go, you can refer to this later and just check everything out. I hope you guys found this video useful. I hope it was less over the place than my old videos and more understandable and more structured. And I hope my mic still sounds as good as my previous video. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.